So would you check that out? We're here at Marriott's Aruba Surf Club in Aruba. And in this video, I'm gonna share what we liked, what we didn't from this day and even from some of our others. Coming right up. All right, let's start this off. I'm here poolside to talk about our very first like. That just happens to be what's right behind me. Happens to be the lazy river and the fantastic pools. You have essentially kind of three pools, I guess if you count the lazy river as its own. You have kind of the upper pool, I guess they actually call that the blue water pool. Then you have the lazy river. Then you have, I believe what is behind me here, they call the tidal pool. And then they even have an adults only 21 and up serenity pool. Fantastic pools here. And best of all, one of the only Marriott Vacation Club timeshare resorts with a lazy river actually on property. There's one other one. That's Marriott's Lakeshore Reserve. We've been there too. I'll put a link to a resort tour up here if you want to check that out. Great pools, fantastic lazy river here. And they even have a couple of hot tubs too. So definitely one of the things we look forward to most when coming to Marriott's Aruba Surf Club. Now here for like number two, over at the beach. That just happens to be the beach and the ocean. Really no beach or ocean that's really much better than here in Aruba. Great flat beaches. The sand even is actually kind of firm, not too soft. So you're not having to wear yourself out trudging through the sand just to get to what is actually spectacularly smooth and flat water. You can wait out there for hours. The only time you might have a wave is if a boat happens to just go by. Beautiful beaches here in Aruba and especially at Marriott's Aruba Surf Club. This happens to be our second like. All right, I'm now up here outside the Aruba Marriott Hotel and Stellaris Casino to talk about light number three. And that just happens to be all of the different kind of semi on-site food and beverage options that you can take advantage of while staying at the surf club. I counted 13 of them between the three resorts here. That's just the hotel, the surf club, and the ocean club. But if you go up to the Ritz Carlton, there's even more. Anything from just kind of casual poolside grub to fine dining steaks at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. So lots of options here between these three resorts and even more at the Ritz. And in fact, you can even charge them all to your villa at the surf club and even earn Marriott Bonvoy points for those incidental spending. So we're looking forward to some extra Bonvoy points in our account that we can use later for a stay somewhere, maybe who knows where, but we like to take advantage of Bonvoy points whenever we can. So that's a great thing here. While staying at Marriott's Aruba Surf Club, so many on-site food and beverage options, you can essentially charge back to your room. Now, let's head down towards Palm Beach because I have some more food and beverage options to show you just off-site from Marriott's Aruba Surf Club. All right, I'm no longer at the resort. In fact, you can maybe see it back there behind me. But that is to talk about now the next like we have and that just happens to be really close walking distance to a lot of restaurants and shops here in the palm beach area of aruba there is actually an exit from the resort kind of on the south side right at the end of the spyglass tower it comes out onto the street here we're a nice sidewalk you can walk down here number of restaurants shops all kinds of stuff to take advantage of here. So you won't even really necessarily even have to rent a car if you don't want to. Take a quick walk down here, maybe at most five, 10 minutes, and you have all kinds of different options to take advantage of. And I'm on my way back now towards the resort. And I, in fact, failed to mention that there's even two restaurants not affiliated with any of the properties, pretty much located within walking distance from the resort, from the beach, mere steps away. So head over there, check those out. So many places to dine and eat here in Aruba. You're not gonna go hungry. Okay, I'm now out here in the parking lot of the Spyglass Tower to talk about our fifth like. And that just happens to be the parking. They do have covered parking under the buildings on the ground floor. And they also have this pretty big parking lot. So over in the Compass and Lighthouse building, pretty much just ground floor parking. But then out here, they also have parking on a surface lot. We've never seemed to have a problem getting a parking space out here, although it is extremely windy, but parking pretty good here at the resort. When we come back late at night, a lot of resorts, parking is full or you have to park a long ways away. We don't really notice that as too much of a problem here at Marriott's Aruba Surf Club. Now, before we head upstairs to talk about some of the dislikes that we have, I want to talk about these back here. That's actually luggage carts. You might think, hey, luggage carts aren't that important. Well, I actually did a whole video, kind of a rant on my opinion of luggage carts. If you want to see that 
I'll put a link to it right up here. But that's for this resort, luggage carts. Great to have them there. I guess they're there mainly for the bell staff to use. But it is nice to not have to be tied to using bell services. A lot of times when we go to an international timeshare property, they always want to have bell services help you with your bags. And being in timeshare, kind of do-it-yourself kind of situation, right? Anytime you go to a timeshare, you're usually kind of on your own. That's what we love about timeshare. So it is nice to have luggage carts to use, so you don't necessarily need to stop by the main entrance or the front entrance to have bell services help maybe get even just groceries to your room. So we really like the luggage situation here, the bell carts, the luggage carts, whatever you call them, you can do it on your own or you can use the bell services at the front entrance. All right, before we jump into our dislikes here at Marriott's Aruba Surf Club, I'd like to ask if you're liking this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help out the videos. It only takes a moment down below to click that thumbs up button and it's completely free. If you could do that, I'd appreciate it. And thank you very much. All right, I'm here on our villa balcony to talk about first dislike and that just happens to be these wristbands. When you check in, they give you wristbands and you essentially need the wristbands to use the lazy river. They're not removable, well, unless you cut them off. And then when you're floating around in the lazy river and they don't see them, well, security down there kind of gets on your case. They're pretty strict on you needing wristbands in the lazy river. I kind of understand why they do it. Essentially, you want to make sure you're staying here to be using the lazy river. If people just happen to be staying at the Ocean Club and didn't sneak over here, they probably wouldn't need to have these on our wrists all week long sleeping in them, bathing in them, eating in them, dining out, going out around the island. You have to be wearing them pretty much everywhere all the time. So one thing we don't like, wristbands here at the surf club. All right, I'm kind of out here on the beach over in front of flip flops here behind me. And let's talk about the second dislike. And that just happens to be their really sad happy hour. Now well, we don't always take advantage of that, but I want to note here, happy hour, it's really four hours long from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. and it's what they say two drinks for $19. That seems pretty expensive. What happens if you only want one drink? They couldn't maybe do 50% off drinks or I guess a two for one but maybe that's what $19 is for two drinks. But I'm afraid that perhaps the only people happy about this happy hour are the resort management here and that's Marriott Vacation Club reaping all the profits from their expensive not so happy hour. Okay now I'm down here poolside in one of these kind of cool bimini chairs have a little awnings on them. They're great for keeping you in the shade. But I'm actually here to talk about our next dislike. And that happens to be, hey, my very own, very official, sanctioned by the resort chair hog licenses or chair hog tags or what they call them, chair tags. So what exactly are these? Well, they give you these at check-in. You get one for each person in your villa. And what they do is officially at 7 a.m. every morning, they open up the chair hogging process. You get to come down here with your chair tags, throw them on whatever chair you want. Maybe a towel, maybe not, maybe something else, maybe not. Stick around, probably not. Most people go back up to their room and essentially what it does is it holds your chair for what they say is two hours. But what you'll find here is if you walk around, you'll notice a lot of empty chairs, nobody in the seats, nobody even in the pools. So what people do, they come down, put on their official chair hogging tag, go back into the room and sleep in. Not something I'm really all that fond of. I guess it's official purposes to kind of prevent people from saving chairs at the beach and the pool at the same time. So every chair must be tagged. So whether it's at the pool or at the beach, so you can't kind of take up two spaces at the same time. But I'm not too fond of the process because unless you're an early riser willing to get up early, get down here early and tag your chairs, well, you're not going to get anything close to poolside really like kind of what some of the other resorts do, at least as long as they enforce it. And that is just kind of the 45 minute rule. Can't have stuff on the chair more than 45 minutes. And if it is, well, they take it away. But I did kind of overhear where somebody said that they took their stuff away from their chair at some point in time. I don't know how long it had been there, but keep in mind the chair tagging process, something you need to be aware of and take advantage of while you're here at Marriott's River Surf Club, if you want chairs really either in the shade or close to poolside but it's just not something we're too fond of here one of our dislikes at the surf club i'm now up here in our villa to talk about the fourth and final dislike that we have and that just happens to be the studio villas now we actually don't tend to stay in studios all that often and in fact we're in a full two bedroom on this visit 
but I do want to point out for those that might be staying in a studio villa or if you don't mind staying in a studio villa as well you might want to reconsider it when you're coming here to the surf club and the reason is is that the studio villas here just have queen size beds most Marriott studios actually have king size beds but most of them here like I said have queen size there are a few here though the studio side of the three bedroom lock-off actually do have king size beds but they're actually not very plentiful I believe maybe only 22 or 24 of those so keep that in mind if you're coming to the surf club you've booked what they call a studio villa or guest room well it's only going to have a queen size bed and if you do happen to be coming here well you're probably going to like another video from here at Marriott's Aruba Surf Club I'm going to put one right here so click on that box coming up next thanks for watching and remember until next time the best destination is always a timeshare